Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns, and in this video, we're going to be going over one of the most important and useful aspects of Klein, which is the plan mode and the act mode. Now, if you hover over the plan mode, it says that in this mode, Klein is going to gather information to architect a plan, and an act mode is going to complete the task immediately. Now, I like to think of plan mode as just a way in which you're basically brainstorming with the large language model to really come up with a full implementation plan. Now, over here, I'm going to say, for example, that I'd like to create a portfolio website for myself. I want it to be simple, maybe an about me page, a resume page, and a contact me page. Now, in plan mode, the large language model is not just going to go out and just write a bunch of code. What it's going to do is that it's going to ask you a couple of questions like, hey, I'll help you create this page. To get started, can you provide me some information that's going to help tailor the website to your preference? So over here, you can actually select one of these options. So I'd like to share specific content details for each page. No, I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to talk about technologies. Let's just say that I want to proceed with a minimal template and then fill in the details later. So This sounds good. I'm going to click on this option. So based on this, it then provides me with a response. So this is the Anthropic Cloud 3.7 um, Sonnet model, which is the thinking aspect. But... Here it created a full plan, so portfolio website plan. So it started off with a proposed solution, what the technology stack is going to be, uh, some information on the about me page, a resume page, a contact page, and then some design features. Here it's saying, does this plan align with what you're looking for or would you like to adjust anything? Say that we are happy with this for now, right? We don't want to change anything else. Instead of just asking it to like, oh, go ahead and create this whole site, I'm going to say something like, um, create a .md file and store all this information on there. Also, I want you to create a checklist of all the things that you need to do um, as well. And then I'm going to toggle the act mode. So what it did is in the ask mode, well, it asked me some questions or in the plan mode, it asked me some questions. It understood, well, what is the overall implementation plan? What are the things that I really want to do? And then in the act mode, it actually created this MD file. Now, what we have in this file is basically all this information about the pages, as well as the overall implementation checklist. So uh, things that I need to do is create a project directory structure, create HTML files about the basic structures, and do all of these things. Now, over here, I've been using the Claude 3.7 Sonnet model. Now, what I can do is switch over to a cheaper model because I like to use the really expensive models when I'm doing the over, like the high level brainstorming. Then once I've done the overall brainstorming, created this implementation plan, that is when I can now switch over to a cheaper model, something like the Claude Haiku as an example. How much is that going to be? So let's just say Claude Haiku. And in this case, this is going to be only about $0.03 per 1 million tokens. And the output price is $1 per million tokens. So this is a lot cheaper. So let's switch over to this really cheap model. And now that we actually have a full implementation plan, um, what I can do now is simply run the command. And it fails initially because this is actually on a Windows computer. So it recognizes that, okay, well, this is supposed to be PowerShell. It is able to execute um, correctly. So it does create like a portfolio site over here. And then let's see how the API request will work. So it says, okay, the directory structure has been created. Let's move on to create the HTML files. So first to start off by creating the file. And what I can do here is um, ask it a follow-up. So I can say something like, look, when you create the files, I want you to also mark those as complete in the portfolio plan MD file. So let's stop, pause the task temporarily and I say, um, once a file has been created, mark it as complete in the portfolio. And I, over here, I'm just going to give it the name of the file. So this way it actually knows well which file it needs to be referencing. So over here, it went in, it uh, updated the HTML files. It said, okay, I actually completed these tasks. So might as well actually mark these as complete. And now it's going over to the contact section. It's writing all of this code over here for the contact section. The next thing that I reckon it should do is go over to the portfolio plan and then mark that as complete. And there it is. So it's going back over to the portfolio plan and then marking the contact as a complete completed step. So this is how you can make use of the large language models efficiently, where you can use the plan mode, really create a full brainstorming session, 
And it doesn't need to be for the entire website. Maybe it's just one small component of a website. That's what you can use the plan mode for. Once you feel like, okay, well, I've gotten a pretty solid understanding of exactly what I want to do. You've brainstormed with this large language model a couple of times. That's when after you can create this portfolio or implementation plan. And then after you create this plan, that's when you can use the act mode to actually go through and really understand, well, okay, every time you create a component, just mark it as complete. That, that's one way in which you can use the plan and act mode, especially if you're going to be creating a project from scratch. Now, another way in which you can do this is imagine that you have a really large repository. So something like the open web UI, which is an open source tool that allows you to host large language models locally on your computer. Now, this is a huge code base. We're talking like thousands and thousands of lines of code. And there's like so much that's actually going on over here. Now imagine that I have this open web UI code base that's open over here. And I know that within open web UI, I actually do have the ability to do rag. So if I go over here on the settings and documents, I see that there is an option for rag, but I don't really know how that rag process works. Now this is where the plan mode can really come in quite handy. Again, let me just make sure that I'm using a uh, something like the Cloud Sonnet 3.7 model. This is great. I'm going to switch the mode back over to plan. And the question that I'm going to say is, um, I want to understand how RAG works in this repository. Um, use diagrams and help me understand the process. Now, the benefit over here is that it actually understands what are going to be the most important files. So it, instead of us actually going in and then looking through, well, all of these different files, like, okay, I see this, there's a folder here for vector database, but where can I find this information on RAG? Like this is, there's another thing over here for vector. There's a connector.py. Do I have to open up connector.py? And like, does this work? I see that the, this one has some connections to some vector databases, but you can see it gets tedious really quickly. Now that is really going to be where um, a tool like the plan mode on client can really shine because what you can do is like you can have it go through, understand about all of the different files over here in the repository. It actually runs a search. It searches for all the retrieval part for um, in, in the entire repository. And then based on that, it actually is looking at all of those different files. So here it is actually going through the process and understanding the key steps. So let me just kind of do its thing here and skip towards the end a little bit. And there we go. So now um, it uh, understood well all of the different files over here. And then based on that, it's talking about the RAG in Open Web UI. So first it starts off with, well, what is RAG? So it's a technique that allows large language models and provides them with external knowledge bases. Um, it says this is the overall RAG architecture in Open Web UI. So there's an ingestion pipeline and a retrieval pipeline. In the ingestion, well, you have some documents into document loaders. We extract the text, we apply some chunking, and then embedding the text and then store it into a vector database. In the retrieval aspect, well, we have a user query. The user asks a question like, hey, can you tell me like what this information is in my knowledge base? Uh, it, we create some query embedding. So we convert the query into numerical representations, and then we search the vector database uh, for the most relevant chunks. Then we go into the generation part. That's where the large language model has the information on the context as well as the original user query. And then based on that, it provides a response. It also gave me some more diagrams over here. So uh, it says open web UI. It also supports multiple vector databases. It has some uh, through an abstraction layer. So we have a vector database connector through all of these different vector databases. And this is the client. And with the client, we can actually use to interact over here. So um, over here, we have the document processing pipeline. So the overall steps for document processing, along with the code that's used over here as well. Um, how we do the embedding and vector search process. So we also have that information. So you can see it's incredibly detailed. Like we have so much information over here um, in this large code base so that I don't actually need to go and really understand and look through all of these components. So if I have like something that um, for example, a really large repository that I can just simply clone to locally on my computer and then use something like um, the plan mode to understand every single bit of components and then actually use that uh, to write my own documentation process. Or actually from here, I can then use the plan mode to create um, an outline on a way in which I can actually improve the overall process as well. So here it says, would you like me to explain these specific parts in more detail? I'm going to say no. Uh, but if, for example, at, at this point, I could 
if I wanted to um, improve on the system and say something like, hey, I want to make this process better, can you outline a plan? So um, I want to make this process better. Can you outline a plan for me? So what it does is that it doesn't actually need to go out and like read through all of this information um, again from scratch. It actually has all of this in the context. So based on that, it now creates a full plan. So here is the improvement roadmap that it created. So it says, okay, I want to, if I want to enhance the overall process, well, this is what I could do. Um, it has some dates over here as well. That's pretty well. I've never seen that before. The dates are also quite relevant because I see over here that on the x-axis, that's 527. So it has a full timeline of all of the things that I should be doing. Uh, it's talking about some advanced chunking strategies over here. So like what I could do for um, different chunking. It it's talking about the embedding and vector search improvements. So methods over here that we could do. And then um, overall steps of what uh, other things that we can have as well. So what I would do at this point is just say something like um, outline the overall plan in a .md file and also include a checklist of all of the things. Include everything you talked about here in the MD file along with uh, a bunch of tasks. And usually at this point, I would just set up the act mode. So it understands, well, okay, I need to basically take all of the information over here, put it into this MD file, then once it's in the MD file, that's when I can use a slightly cheaper, again, large language model and actually start working on the overall implementation plan as well as the strategy that it outlined for me. But that is basically it. Hopefully this gave you a little bit of an insight into what the plan and the act mode is on Klein, why it's very useful, why I use the plan mode all the time. It's sort of like having the uh, access to a software engineer where Usually when you have um, a software engineer do a particular type of task, the first question they, uh, or the first thing that they would do is ask you some follow-up questions, right? Like, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? Do you want to do this or do you want to do that? And then based on that, they come up with a full plan. This is basically what the idea here, here is for the plan mode, where we are completely refining a full plan. We are really understanding, well, what are all of the core requirements? Based on that, we are creating a full and uh, outlining a full plan. And we can see over here that this is a very thorough plan that it actually highlighted over here. And I stopped the task, but we can see that there were so many different elements um, that it included over here. So for um, advanced chunking strategies, for metadata enrichment, for advanced embedding approaches. So it's got a huge amount of information. But that's basically it. That's the plan and the act mode. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if you like the plan and the act mode or if you have some other use cases of this mode. I'd be very curious to know. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.